to run it up with Dan. Run, run it, it up. <laughs> Sitting here with Jason <laughs> Somerville. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Good to have you uh, yeah. hanging out. Good this to be exciting. hanging out here at your I, place. I don't even remember a lot of the hands, but I took a look at these vi- hands a few days ago. Nice. And uh, I, I know that when I was doing this, I was playing. I was doing my uh, my draft, my annual hockey draft. I didn't know it was a two day event. Right. So I was kind of multitasking. Yeah. And then you know, as people saw, I got to the final table. They kind of huddled around. So sure, I'm yeah. curious to see how many mistakes I made. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's uh, get some cards in the air here and see what's going on. So we're starting out in stud mm-hmm. and you have about 15 big bets, which is a pretty big stack at uh, in any kind of limit game, right? Yeah. I, you look at them differently. Actually, you know, with no limit, we call them, you know, yeah, you're right. You actually said it right. You said yeah. big bets. Yeah. You know, typically in no limit, we talk about big blinds right. in, in, you know, in limit games, we talk about big bets and that's a lot. That's typically, a lot. if you yeah. have more than 10, you know, you're doing real, real, you know, you're doing just fine in the tournament. Right, right, yeah. So let's uh, get this underway. So this is stud. Uh, we're going to touch on, as we hit these games the first time, we're going to go over the basics of how the game works very quickly for you guys who are just tuning in. So this is seven card stud. You get two cards down, four cards up, one more card down. The interesting thing about stud is that it's a street by street game. Unlike Hold'em and Peel, where there's a flop with three cards, this is a, it's a little bit different playing stud because of the incremental street by street level, which obviously impacts our hand selection and impacts our our strategy and obviously all of these games are limit poker games uh, which is definitely a yeah important also important to note i mean i'm sure that most of you understand this but uh we can see all the cards right now right but for example if you see like this uh, the the cashmere has two four seven for right. example well i can see the seven but yeah. we can, the two four is underneath you know, it's, sure. it's covered. Yeah, so yeah. You, it's important for you guys to know that the, the two cards that are slightly below the up card, those cards are hidden. We can see them now on the replay, but of course, at the time, Daniel could not see all the cards. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that would make them. it too easy for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Mike Leah starts off by limping with uh, Jack Jack 5. So, as we can see, he has the best hand to start out against all these other hands here, but he decides to limp, I guess, because there's a queen and a king behind him. This is stud high, so not high low. Uh, what do you think about, about his decision to just call here? versus to come in for a full complete. Okay, so I'm sure that, you know, in your broadcast, a lot of people watch it. They talk about balance, right? Sure. And, be, you know, you know, being balanced in certain situations. I typically, in this situation, you see Childers with the bring-in, with a deuce, which yeah. whenever you're the bring-in, just so we start with there, is uh, you always want to bring it in for the minimum. You sure. know, even if you had three deuces or a pair of aces in the hole, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to tell everybody. Is that also true for stud high-low? Or I think for the most part, there are very yeah. few situations where you want to come in for the full amount right, in stud right. high-low. You typically want to... Uh, always come in for the minimum. Sure. Right? So now in first position, Mike Leah has a jack up, and right behind him is a queen and a king. Now notice the queen uh, is really heavy short stacked, and I'm only bringing that up because we're in a tournament. Right. Like, this wouldn't matter if you're playing in a cash game. So, right, right. You know, so even if you were up to you know to play a pot against Blanco, the, the, the damage is relatively limited. It's still a lot. It's basically going to be a pot that plays through. Right, so right. So the queen and king directly behind you, and then a really dead board behind. you got two sevens, a two, and a three. Sure. None of those are worries. So there's only two real guys you're worrying about, Blanco Negro and Light Bright. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you're better off going ahead and raising here. Right. And often what you'll find, you, you, the queen is unlikely to just make a play here with nothing. Right, right. right. So typically Especially they're going to have... stack size, first hand of the final table. Yeah. You know, yeah. It makes so, sense. you know, typically you're going to find out where you're at. Now, ideally, let's say, for example, if I have split jacks yeah. and I'm up against a, a queen board, I'd like to have a king or an ace in the hole. Sure. That'd be great. So you can make yeah. uh, kings up or whatever sure. to beat Sure, because then queens. it makes it like a... Then basically I could I could know you have queens and still right. call all the way. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. hey, you know? It was trying to make the bear, yeah. Right. So one of the things about stud, as we get into it, is yeah. stud is a game where you can know your beat, right. you can know your opponent has a better hand, but it's still correct to call right. and draw right. because you're getting the right price. Like in a spot where you would open with a 10, let's say, and someone re-raises you with a deuce. They almost for sure have a pair in the hole. So you can kind of yeah. call down knowing you're behind and just try to see what happens. Sure. So I don't hate his limp entirely although i will say this there's yeah. a couple problems with his limp in yeah. terms of balance right okay when he's limping here what is he saying he has right yeah. well three maybe spades. i have yeah. but does he have three spades because right. here's what we have to look at yeah interesting stud is a game of board you know you have to look at the board there's a two of spades seven of spades three of spades yeah if he had three spades in the hole guess what he'd do he'd probably just fold Muck right. It, right right so what he's saying he has is something like jack 10 8 Jack right. ten nine, maybe a pair of sixes in the hole, or you know, king maybe queen the, jack is that okay too? Maybe, but even with the king and the queen, but I, you maybe see the not. thing with king queen jack, it's yeah. like why wouldn't you raise? Because right. you have a blocker to the queen, right. you have a blocker to the king, sure, so sure. you got to raise there, right, 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 right. So in this specific case, especially with the three spades out, yeah. his hand is even more face up. Wow, when he wow, moves, right, yeah, right. So I'd much rather see him raise, raise. here, yeah. yeah, raise because also 
instead. Notice, like you see, there's 25 six in the middle. Yeah. Plus 4,800. Yeah, that's 30,000 in the middle. That's 30K. Just take the dang money. Right. right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you look at Child Childers. He's got ace, deuce, four, right? Yeah, yeah. For a limp, he's in for free. Right. He could spike an ace. And then that's it. You're so behind. Now you're point. dead. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you yeah. don't know you're dead because you don't have any information about Childers, you know, bring in. He's right. just a deuce. Right. Well, now he catches an ace. Does he have it? I have no idea. Yes, that's so, very true. So right off the bat, I think that if I was Mike Lee, I would raise here. Just raise it. Having said that, if he has a plan going forward that's, you know, he plans to be balanced, I'm right. all for it. I just think, as I said to you earlier, big mistake when there's three spades out. Yeah. Because you're not representing the full part for, of your range. For sure. That makes a lot of sense. So let's let's progress on here. Sure. So um, looks like uh, queen folds, king folds. Now, this is an interesting spot. Ooh. It's a very quick fold Oh, there. no. That's a mistake. Yeah. So let's go back and take a look at that at that hand because Ooh, that's, a, that's an interesting. This guy's really nitty. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. So, so, so three, six, seven here with only one heart dead because uh, the Black folded a queen of clubs. He folds the, uh, the three, six, seven of hearts. How do you feel about that? It's a mistake. First yeah. of all, you got a cheap price to limp, right? Yeah. I don't know if maybe he misread that. Like, sure. it's possible that he didn't notice that it was a limp versus a raise. Right. Because um, because you can make an argument in a tournament against Jack, who's raising into a queen and a king. Well, he's probably got jacks, right. so I'm an underdog. So and your pairs are no li are not live. You have to make a four sure. five or whatever. And a bigger problem is I can't really represent sevens here. Yeah. Why? Why can't I represent sevens? The seven is dead. The seven out. So everyone knows if you're a good stud player, you don't call with sevens against a jack if you got a seven out. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So right off the bat, that puts you in a tough spot. Having said that. The, the, the strength of the hand is good because there's no fours or no fives out. So he has right. backdoor straight potential. Yep. There's only one three and the six is live, right? Yeah. So his pair of cards, you know, he's got one that's pretty good with the six. He's got the, the double gutter straights, but he just has a powerful flush draw. I can understand his reasoning for not wanting to call because his hand is face up here, right? Sure. If he calls and you didn't see his cards, what do you think he's got? It must have a flush draw. He's got three hearts, right? Yeah, right. The key is you don't know which three hearts. Yeah, sure. You know? So there's a lot of playability I think that could help. So but I think the most important thing from my point of view is that Mike just limped. If yeah. he had raised, then I think folding is much more reasonable. But at this point, mm -hmm. he's getting seven to one and folds a three flush. It's that just, just seems... With only one heart out. Yeah, that seems you too You know, tight. two hearts... Typically, if you're in an eight-handed game yeah. and you see more than two of your suit out... Yeah then you don't play a three flush. Right. If there's two and you have a live hand otherwise, sure. it's like, okay. Like an ace, queen, jack of spades. Oh, yeah. Because then yeah. you have some pair potential, some straight potential, sure. stuff like that. So in this case, there's only one heart out, yeah. which is you know gives him a really good situation. And it's cheap. Like you said, it's 4,800. He yep. can call. If he bricks off on four, he catches right. like catches a nine. The jack of bananas. He yeah, can just, just Okay, you're done. Right. You know? But if you yeah. catch a heart, all of a sudden, if he catches like... The five of hearts, for example. Right. He's got a more powerful hand than Jack's. Right. He's got a super strong hand. For 4,800. Is he actually favored if he catches the five of hearts? 100% favor. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. He's got three draws at catching a heart or a five on top of all those goofy back doors he can make of straights <laughs> or two right. pair type hands, right? Right. Very cool. So let's see Let's see what happens. So he folds his uh, seven. And now it's on us, or you, I should say, with a five, five, three in the hole. Now, what do you think when Mike limps here? At that point, you're thinking that he probably has... Like, how are you reacting to this? With your hand like this, are you, you're probably planning on just limping, I would assume? Yeah, like, so Mike plays a lot of hands, right? Yeah. So obviously, like I said before, I know it's not three spades in his hand, but I do think that he's the type of player that would limp with a jack-10-8 type hand or maybe sevens or something like that. Right. What I like, if I had three, three, five, now this is important to note. If I yeah. had split threes with a five, yeah. it's kind of a fold. You might just fold it, right? Because yeah. if I catch the three, the problem is it's everybody can see it. Everybody knows. So now yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. you have an open pair. And right. in stud... You always should be wary if somebody pairs their, what we call their, their door, door card, card right? Yeah. They pair their door card, their most likely hand is three of that card. Right. But when you have the pair in the hole called, you know, we call it wired. If you have a wired pair, right. ooh, that's powerful. Sure. Because if I catch some stinky little five of diamonds, it no doesn't look like it helps me. Right, right, right of course. So I like that. And I like the fact that, you know, this is, you know, there's no threes out. I haven't seen a five out. Um, and let's let's talk about uh, two things here. If a five was out, would you still play this hand for no. a limp? No, no, that'd be, that'd be enough to make you fold right now. Sure, it's just too too much yeah. of a stretch, even for a limp. Yeah, because you know you're up against the jack who's limped, you know he's got yeah. something. I just feel like you're just too far behind. It just especially in a tournament, like you don't have as much leeway to just kind of dance, right? Right. Like yeah. even though I have a good stack of chips, I don't want to just donate. Sure, know? sure. So I think if there's a five out, that makes my hand a lot worse. Okay, interesting. Especially with a three up. If I had the five with the ten up. Now I would play right, because the 10 right. is there's a lot more cards that can come with the 10 that can make me have a scary board because sometimes in stud, it doesn't even matter what you have. If you had like a jack up yeah. and you have two, three in the hole, right? Which is, sure. If you catch a 10 and a nine, people go, uh oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. Because if you didn't have anything, you do now. Right. Very interesting. Uh, my last question on this is had he raised, would you still play this hand for a call? 
you would still call if Mike had raised in this position? G- given that all the fives are alive, given the threes are alive, would you still call here? I would for one specific reason: What's implied that? odds, right? Okay, so yeah. because of the, the you know because my parent pair is wired, I can get some double or triple bet double bets in on second on on fifth or sixth street. Yeah. Right. And on top of that, if I do pair my three, yeah. He's going to incorrectly fold, or he should incorrectly fold jacks, because it hmm. looks like I might have threes with an ace or threes with something like that. So right, right. if I make open threes, which there's three of, like I'll win the hand dis- despite the fact that he's getting the right price. So if he just has hmm. jacks and he sees me with open threes, he should yeah. fold his jacks. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. And also, well, that's actually, it's a little dangerous for me to play that hand, again, because of the same reason I mentioned earlier, all the spades out. Right. So when I call here, I'm letting him know I don't have three spades. Right, because you would never call it three spades or given all the spades are exactly. out. Exactly. Okay, so let's see what happens. So it looks like you decide to limp behind, mm-hmm. and these two. And Cashmere obviously has an easy fold and stud, and Childers gets to see a fourth a fourth street for free. Yeah. So let's me look at the board. Nothing changes here. Childers catches a seven. You catch a, a spade, and Goliath go catches a deuce. So action's on you first. It's a great street for me, right? Right. Yeah. For, no, no, number one, obviously there's a queen out, but the queen is a helpful card because if he does have jacks, I catch that queen. Now I've got queens up. You know, I take the lead. Right. That's very uh, powerful. On top of that, I mean. You know, when you're playing online, you know, sometimes people are multi-tabling or whatever. Just because there's a bunch of spades out doesn't mean everybody saw that. Right, right? exactly. So yeah. <laughs> they don't know for sure that I don't have a flush draw. I mean, I did limp with a three of spades. Right, right. You know, it's still a possibility. It's possible, right. Sure. So I feel like the deuce seven is is just a dead hand. And yeah. when, when when Mike here, goalie school, catches the off deuce, yeah. well, that never helps him. Right, impossible to help him. So, so do you consider ever leading just to kind of like push the the bring in now, who just has like probably two bananas in the hole? I mean, but you you must have assume you're probably behind goalies go. Like, do you consider I leading here? I didn't just, assume that I was. Yeah, because right. I said it's I possible, think there's a lot yeah. of three straight cards. Right. That you know he limps with. But in that case, would you like to bet against the jack? Deuce? I think I did. Right. I think you do. Okay. Well, we'll I see. believe I, I do. We'll I find believe, out. I mean, I I would if I. So, so you right like now. so you like betting? You think I do like betting? Okay. It's a good card for me to bet in a limped pot. Right. If I didn't bet, it's probably Ooh, because, you oh, you know why? Okay, it's nice. probably because I thought he raised or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. But interesting Interesting how everything kind of cascades off of an early decision in, in the hand. Sure. Very interesting to see. Okay, so let's just see what happens. You check, must go check, check to Mike, and I, I would imagine he must bet. Yeah. And it goes check, check to him here. Yeah. Now, if I was paying more attention, I would have bet here. I, I probably thought he... Uh, you have an easy call. Childers has an easy fold. Mm-hmm. So that's all pretty normal. Ooh, well, what, a a nice, what a nice, what a nice card for you there. So, despite the fact that there's a lot of spades out, now he's gonna be worried that I have at least one in my hand. Right. Um, so, at at this point, uh, you have the lead. Do you, or you know, your first act? Do you decide? I mean, do you ever weigh just betting out straight away here, trying to uh, represent some sort of a flush or some sort of like? I mean, I guess like I guess that doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. Because but. here's the thing. So, I'm gonna call here. If he, if I check, I'm gonna call. Right. Because. Uh, if he's got jacks, I've got, you know, I can catch a three to make two pair, a five to make trips, a queen or a king to make two pair that probably locks him out. And backdoor spades. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And obviously if I catch a spade on six, he may be, you know, wary yeah. uh, of me, of me not having that. So that you can go two ways with this, you know, right. I think leading is fine because Mike may have a hand like 10, nine or 10, eight, although 10, nine, I don't really love being against. Right. Having said that two Queens out, two Kings out makes it a lot less likely that he will, uh. I think you the know, most the most telling point about this though is that you, like you said you're gonna check call anyway so you may as well bet on yeah, the chance because he he's not gonna raise right like yeah. I have that board like what, what yeah. he's oh, he raise can't raise anything yeah, he's not right. gonna raise jacks up <laughs> right even if he has I a queen have, in the hole he's yeah. got to worry about me having split threes with a queen so maybe I've got queens up kings up yeah he doesn't know what I have it's just there's a lot of stuff I could have it makes a lot of sense so let's see if you do fire that bet out I love the drama before yeah, you do bet yeah because I don't remember yeah I didn't watch this this is my first time watching this so this will be fun for me. So you do a bet. You think Mike has to call here, probably, right? Like this is not a spot he can just fold straight away. I think he can fold. Really? Um, yeah, he can. I don't think they necessarily should. But part yeah. of the problem with the way he played is he didn't come in raising, so his hand is underrepped, right. underrepresented. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. So he's got a much better hand than you know you would expect, essentially. Yeah. So let's see what he does here. Tanks and then complains. I think. Tanks and then <laughs> complains. <laughs> and then calls. And okay. Then I think I. I think I. Yeah. He okay, calls we'll and then folds six. I think. <laughs> okay. We'll see what happens. He does call. And you would make open kings. So you make yes, kings so and fives. That, that'll win. That'll be the, that'll be the end <laughs> yeah. of this hand here. So pretty pretty fun hand. Definitely an interesting one. And first blood. First hand. Final table. Hey, hey. Let, let them know who the boss is. That's right. 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 <laughs> right there, there. That's awesome. 